Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance where people have conformed to the letter but not the spirit of a request. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some malicious compliance. I must provide detailed information about my doctor's appointment to get approved for paid time off? Are you absolutely sure? Well if you say so. A few years ago, I worked in an office with some pretty strange and crappy rules. One such rule was that while we could apply personal PTO, pay time off, for any reason, management needed a detailed summary of the reason before they would approve. This resulted in several instances of co-workers applying for PTO for things like funerals and birthdays and being told the current project deadline is more important than your niece's birthday. Or, do you really need to attend your mother's cousin's funeral? That doesn't sound pressing. It was a really toxic system that resulted in some turnover from co-workers who were sick of being held hostage over PTO. Furthermore, both the department manager and the HR manager needed to sign off the PTO request which resulted in some frustrating situations where one approved but the other did not. It did not help that the HR manager was a douche. Pretty much the only time you could expect to be approved was for court dates and important medical appointments. But you still needed to provide details, even if it happened to be a very personal medical or legal situation. This does not strike me as legal, but sadly, this isn't the first time I've run into this working in Texas. One more bit of context. My department manager was also a jerk. Without going into too much detail, he was a power-tripping sloth who liked to harass women, like me. Let's call him jerk, and the HR manager douche. We all hated both of them. On to the malicious compliance. I had an important appointment with my psychiatrist coming up. My meds for anxiety and PTSD were not cutting the mustard anymore and I was in a really bad place mentally. I needed a medical adjustment, so I took the soonest appointment available. Work would have to cope with a couple of hours without me. I submitted my PTO request to jerk and douche for approval. Given the intensely personal nature of the appointment, I left the details sparse. It was rejected. Both Jerk and Douche said in an email that I needed to give details about my appointment. In accordance with company policy, Jerk had the nerve to call me into his office and chide over my unacceptably terse PTO request. You know the rules. Why would you waste my time with such a brief request? You know I can't approve this. Etc. I was angry, but as I stewed at my cubicle, it dawned on me that I could get back at Jerk and Douche merely by complying with their own rules. I formulated a plan. I sent an email to Douche and CC Jerk. Always CYA, folks. I said, are you sure you need the details of my appointment? Are you positive? It's really personal. Both Douche and Jerk said yes. We need the details of your PTO circumstances. You know the rules. I replied that it's very private. Are you sure I need to talk about it? We sent some emails back and forth until I was sure I had a solid paper trail. Then I decided, well, if they really need my personal medical details, which I still think is illegal, but whatever, then I suppose I better give it to them. I submitted a new PTO request with all the relevant information that I was going to see my psychiatrist for an urgent appointment. I needed to be seen at the earliest possible time because I was having thoughts of hurting myself because I have PTSD from being hurt in foster care. I threw in some details about what my foster father did to me, how I went numb and used drugs to cope and how I was hospitalized as a teenager. I also screenshotted and emailed my request to a few of the higher-ups, saying my previous request was insufficient, so wanted to make sure I got it right this time. I submitted it. 
There were no snippy emails this time. Only approved, appearing in green text to my request in the system, maybe four minutes after I submitted it. I blissfully went about my day, happy to have my PTO. Curiously, neither jerk nor douche emerged from their offices. The fallout. When I showed up for work at 8 the following day, I was immediately called into the VP's office. One of the higher managers and a woman that I recognised from legal were also present. VP politely asked me to sit and kindly explained the grotesque email I had sent out yesterday. He was a polite but rather out of touch older gentleman. So I made myself clear. I needed PTO for a very personal doctor's appointment and my previous request was denied by both jerk and douche for being too brief. And Jerk even called me into his office to complain about wasting his time. I didn't want to be rejected again, so I made sure my request was as detailed as possible. I also passed it on to management to verify that the level of detail was up to snuff when it came to corporate guidelines. And yes, I do have PTSD. It's all true, and they can reference my ADA paperwork in HR for more information. VP asked me a couple more brief questions. He then apologised for the hassle, said I was being credited some extra paid time off for my trouble, and that the company would be reviewing its approach to the paid time off approval process. I was then dismissed back to my desk. I received written apologies from jerk and douche that very morning, hand delivered by a tense and rather petrified jerk. I think legal put him up to it. Both Jerk and Douche went out of their way to avoid me for the remainder of my time at the company, which was a blessing. The few times we were forced to interact, they spoke very quickly and looked desperate to end the conversation. I guess my PTO request was a little too intense for them. Whatever the case, it was the end of Jerk's little power trips, at least with me personally. Also, that same morning, we received a company-wide email marked as important. There was a change in the PTO policy. Requests with regards to medical and other sensitive reasons no longer required detailed explanations, effective immediately. Bonus, one of my friends in HR, well, not really a friend, but a woman who liked to discuss crocheting with me at the water cooler, showed me an internal email from Douche to all of HR staff. Every PTO request from me personally was to be approved immediately and without question. I tested this later that summer by requesting a day off to watch Netflix. That's specifically what I put in the request field. I planned on quitting soon, so was in a flippant mood. It was approved immediately. I think they had me flagged in their system. Truth be told, I could have probably taken a whole month off and gotten paid for it, but I didn't push my luck. I left the company for a much more tolerable, less toxic, higher paying job about 6 months later. And yes, my appointment went well and I'm doing better now. I started attending a trauma support group, met my SO and I've been able to reduce the dose of one of my meds. Now I'm no legal expert and you guys probably know more than me but I'm pretty sure that is illegal to, to request so, such specific information. But yeah, like I said, I might be wrong, but they probably should have got shut down for that. Company policy outranks a written contract? Okay, we'll stick to policy then. Early last year, my wife got a promotion which required moving across the state. Her company offered a very generous moving package which was formally written up in a contract which we had to sign and agree to before the promotion was official. One of the big draws was that the contract said it would pay for all closing costs and related fees for not only the sale of our previous house, but the purchase of our new house in our new city. I was a little dubious and had my wife clarify as there are associated fees due at closing which aren't really sale fees such as your prepaid homeowner's insurance for the year, taxes and HOA fees. But the contract said all fees and the HR specialist reiterated this so we were happy. 
Cue to a few months later. We've moved, rented short term, found a new home, closed and moved into it. The final reimbursement check comes in and it's about $1,000 short for all of our prepaids. I wasn't shocked, but I double checked the contract and yep, clear as day, all fees was included. So my wife reached out to the HR moving supervisor to check on this and she was pretty curtly told that we had been misled and that the company policy was only to pay closing costs themselves and all fees just meant closing cost fees. That's always been the company policy, we were told, and the contract wasn't literal on all fees. This went back and forth for a day. My wife politely escalated it and we did get a sympathetic HR director, but policy was policy, so her hands were tied. Here's the malicious compliance though. While company policy said we couldn't get the prepaid fees reimbursed, she, the HR director, asked for all of our moving and rental receipts. As company policy does state that those would be paid, the HR director poured over our receipts and all for another day and reached back out with a formal letter which said, sorry, company policy doesn't allow prepaid reimbursement so you won't get your $1,000. But I did find that you weren't adequately reimbursed for your move and short-term rental as per company policy, and we have submitted a claim for you for that amount. Another day later, and we got a check for $5,800. We just wanted them to honor the contract, but following company policy to the letter got us another $4,800 we didn't realize we were owed. So, I'd say it worked out in the end. Edit. To answer a common question about being owed the $1,000 per the contract, what we were told is that the contract we signed was supposed to have a company policy addendum which had the definitions, and all other fees is defined in that as excluding prepaids, insurance, etc. So, someone did a goof by A, not sending us that, and B, telling us that the stuff was included. So while we could have hassled for that $1,000, it wouldn't be worth the time, fees, or money, especially when the company has been above and beyond for my wife on everything else. Good raises, great benefits, great boss, constantly training her on things she asks to learn, etc. We've also learned from experience that small claims court isn't always the way to go. Wow, that's, that's a HR director actually doing something really good. That's a surprise. Expect me to break process and use my personal phone for work? Alright, thanks for paying for my phone. Background. I work for an IT company and get outsourced to a media company for support. The work hours are grueling. I work about 60 hour weeks and average about 40 hours overtime a month. I support around 13 countries where the company has a footprint and our service desk is supposed to call me when there are issues logged to us after regular work hours. However, our service desk is pathetic and rarely call me. And when they do, it is around 4 hours later which is a big financial loss to the company. So majority of the times, I get a WhatsApp from the managers telling me the issues and then go to resolve it. I do not get paid a cell phone allowance to get called on my personal number or whatsapped from all these countries. Now to the story. It was Sunday and I was spending time with my dad for Father's Day when I get a whatsapp from the douchebag manager. Now bear in mind, this guy is in charge of all of these countries. Telling me there is a major outage in one of the countries, why haven't I looked at it yet? about 4 hours since the issue began, and that I should look at it now. I said no problem, and told him that I did not get a call from the service desk or a reference number yet, but that I will look into it, because this is the business process that should be followed and was on the contract that he signed. He then gets furious and replies that this is a serious issue and I am expected to always look at the issue when being messaged on WhatsApp and that I should not wait for a call from service desk. 
which is what I already do. Now, this being Father's Day, I am already upset that I have to cut time with my dad Shaw. Then, I realized what to do. I tell him, no worries, I will do so. I fix the issue and take a screenshot of the message. I send it to the boss and tell him to please add a cell phone allowance to the monthly bill to the douchebag manager, as I am expected to use my personal device even more for work. We change the billing to include the allowance, and I mail it to the douchebag manager on Monday, stating the bill now includes cell phone allowance. Five minutes later, I get a call. What is this regarding a billing charge? Well, you said I should always accept calls and messages from you for work. This is BS. I am not going to pay for this. The douchebag manager is furious, and he pulls me and boss into a meeting and tells us that he will not pay a cell phone allowance for me and I show him the screenshot of his message to me that I am expected to be available when he calls or messages me and that this breaks the regular contract agreement that service desk is supposed to call me with issues and I will respond on email. He tries to argue that WhatsApp is not a valid form of business communication and that I cannot use it as justification to include the billing. Now, I always keep my WhatsApp history for reasons like this. With a smile on my face, I pull out my phone and scroll through it showing boss and the douchebag manager the amount of times I get messages and calls for work on WhatsApp to sort out the issues from the douchebag manager and other managers. They are using it as a professional business communication tool with me. My boss also smiles and says, Either you pay the cell phone allowance, or OP blocks all WhatsApps and calls from everyone related to the business and only accepts calls from service desk. The douchebag manager had no choice but to agree and pay my cell phone allowance, which is enough to cover my whole phone and data plan. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my job and happily helped the customer when they messaged me because it was more efficient and convenient for me as well. But that particular day, douchebag manager rubbed me the wrong way, and I decided I was tired of it. And now, I basically have a free phone and a bit of extra money in my pocket every month. I'm quite confused as to why the, the douchebag manager was so concerned about paying the bill, because surely it's just going to come out of the company's money, not his direct money, but I, I guess he's, some people are just penny pinchers, aren't they? Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.